ready for the worst pregnancy scare ever. You're watching Beyond the Triller's review of the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 1. It's impossible. Whoa. The fetus is incompatible with your body. It's too strong and fast growing. It's crushing you from the inside out. Your heart will give out before you can deliver. Back in the 1960s, a campy little horror novel called Rosemary's Baby gripped the mainstream imagination. It was turned into a movie by none other than Roman Polanski and was a huge box office success, not to mention cemented Mia Farrow's rising star. Now, 50 years later, another tale of supernatural sexuality has once again gripped our imagination, this time laced with the message of celibacy before marriage to reflect an increasingly religious mainstream. In Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series, teenage Bella Swan desperately wants to have sex with her vampire boyfriend, yet he refuses to do so until they are married. Yes, it's every parent's dream dating scenario for their kids, which is why so many parents actually take their kids to see the Twilight movies. But with Breaking Dawn Part 1, they're in for an awkward two hours as Bella and Edward, finally married, consummate their love, i.e. have crazy wild vampire sex. However, the awkwardness might be worth it as Meyer continues to make this a cautionary tale. As soon as Bella and Edward have sex, Bella becomes pregnant. That's right, no free rides on Edward. The unborn baby, being half vampire, threatens to kill Bella from inside. The experience promises to be gruesome enough to make any teenage girl or woman think twice before going all the way. In other words, this is not a date movie. The final installment, which is in two parts, the second will be released one year from now, is directed by Bill Condon, who helmed Gods and Monsters and Dreamgirls. Yeah, the guy's all over the place creatively, but his one constant is that he keeps things classy and highbrow, two things the Twilight franchise could certainly use. While the series makes more and more money with every entry, it's also becoming a bigger and bigger pop culture joke. As a result, its three stars are eager to move on and are already working hard to distance themselves from the franchise while still fulfilling their obligations to promote these final two films. So will the addition of sex allow Twilight to mature, or will it just cause the franchise to jump the shark? Let's go find out. All right, so Jameson, you're a BTT viewer. <laughs> a lot of BTT viewers have challenged me to find a guy who saw this movie. I found one. How was it? Um, you kind of have to repress all of the, you know, laughter and yeah. doubt and kind of embarrassment of seeing it. And, you know, it's mildly enjoyable. Oh, good. <laughs> How did you like it? I really liked it very well. <laughs> Twilight Breaking Dawn. It was worth every moment I've been waiting to see it. It was wonderful. I even cried in the movie. I loved it. It was everything that I thought it was going to be. Have you read the books? Yes, three times. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the first movie I saw it. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, did you think you picked oh. the right one? Yeah, it was good. It's better than um, True Blood or um, Vampire Diaries. Pretty good. Oh, why only pretty good? Well, I don't know, I guess because the first, the opening scene was where Jacob takes off his shirt, so. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I can leave. <laughs> but there were some parts where it was definitely too cheesy, and I think that detracted from the movie. Was it that way in the book? Or no, did they not do that? as much. They did it for the yeah, movie? Yeah, they did it for the movie. Ooh. read the book. I yeah? Read, I read, I was sitting there like, Open your eyes, but open your eyes. Finally, she did. And it was right. I was like, yes. To me, this is the closest to the book. I, you know, this movie's based off the book. It's yeah. The closest. Do you think it's because they have more time? Because they split it into two? Yeah, I think that was the reason. Mm. It helped bond me and my mom, so I think it's a, it's a oh, positive really? thing. Oh, yeah. how so? How did? Um, well, she, I got her to read the books as well, and so now she's gone to every midnight premiere with me, and it's something that we can talk about and be totally obsessed with. Did they handle it tastefully? Because, you know, a lot of families go and see the Twilight movies. Is this something a family can uh, still go and see? Well, not for children, I wouldn't say. Not for children, not this, the part especially when uh, she's going all through, all through this, all this trauma. People should be prepared when they go Okay, watch. all right, because they have a lot of between fans, we've, shot, we've seen a lot of little girls in the theater yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's a pretty adult movie. How was it talking to your mom about that kind of stuff? Um, I think <laughs> you know, it was fine. They didn't really show, you know, too much in the yeah. adult scenes, but it, it wasn't too, like, you know, promiscuous for little kids. Some people are saying that Bella is not a good role model because, you know, she got married right out of high school and she got knocked up. What do you think? Uh, I've, I've seen worse. <laughs> we are too young. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all right. It's like, they look like the 20s, so. 
That's true. So, they could play it off. <laughs> the actors aren't too young. I think, you know, she's someone that's in love, and so she's just, you know, she's fighting for her love, and that's a good thing to be. I think they need to do some research. There's a lot of people getting, you know, I mean, getting married at a young yeah. age. I got married at 20, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're in love, you're in love. So now that you know that he makes evil vampire babies, are you still on Team Edward? Oh, yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. <laughs> Edward Great. is my passion. Who do you think is the right guy for her, Bella? If she could go with both of them, yeah. I'll be fine with it. <laughs> So do you like where they broke it off for the next movie? Um, you know what? They had to break it off somewhere. And um, I did scream when that happened. Um, it was like, oh, just let me see Bella. Just let me see what she's going to look like. But, you know, they're making you wait, and I think that's good. I didn't really like how they just cut it off. Oh, because you're making it in two movies, right? Yeah. Will you see the next one? Sure. Yeah. Might as well finish it out at this point, right? Yeah. Are you going to make him see the last one? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's already promised. Oh, good. Oh, great, great, great. What will you tell your friends about this movie? If they're like, oh, come on. I want to tell my friends. Oh, yeah, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the time it came early yeah. in the morning. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I can see me here. Everybody has their opinion. And, you know, this movie, I kind of was skeptic myself, but this movie kind of uh, shows that they can do a good job on a movie. Read the books. I had so many people who hated it. As soon as they read the books, they're like, all right, really? you made me a believer. Stop hating, get over it. Bye. <laughs> what do you give the movie on a one to ten? An eight. An eight? Okay, what do you give it on a one to ten? A generous six and a half. I give it an eight out of ten. Give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. An eight. Yeah, I'd give it a nine. Ten. Oh, ten. I'd give it like a ten, ele- ten, eleven. So fans say Twilight haters can suck it, as this latest entry gives them exactly what they want, and in return they give it a nine. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from Regal Ewok, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.